Depth versus complexity. What's the difference and why does it matter? Well, I would define depth as the amount of content that a game has, where complexity would be the way in which that content is explained to the player. In other words, how much stuff is there to do and how accessible is that stuff? Now, there are obviously some caveats here, such as when I say content, I actually mean good content, because if we literally just defined it as how much stuff is there to do in the game, then every single Ubisoft release for the past 10 years would be game of the year contenders. They got a lot of outposts to clear. So depth is content, actual content, and complexity is simply the manner in which that content is relayed to the player. I believe that the former should be as high as possible, while the latter as low or just downright absent, because you do want stuff to do in your games, right? I mean, why else are you playing them, obviously. Wait, I'm sorry, what? You don't want that? What do you want? What kind of games are you even playing? Oh. Assuming you actually enjoy playing games, then you probably do not want to experience the game's content from either A, all at once in a massive text menu or pop-up barrage, or B, from a source that's not even in the game. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love wikis and diving deep into things, but as with everything in life, there is a time and a place for it. Think of it like this. If the only response that you have for someone who asks, where do I go next? Or what do I do now? Is uh, check the wiki or check the guide. Then you've got a problem. There is no reason to obfuscate information from the player, ever. What do I mean by this. Well, have you played one of these games? Now that's some complexity right there for you. Are these bad games? No. Quite the opposite, actually. Just good freaking luck trying to get someone to stick around with one of these games for more than an hour or two without pushing them towards some kind of guide or answering every single question they have outright. Why? Because while these games have an insane amount of content, the way in which that content is presented to the player is pretty, mm, how should I say me think about it? Piss poor. Well, Wooly, I, I don't want a game where I'm constantly being handheld and I get my progression spoon fed to me like I'm a little baby game. And whoa, 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 whoa. I agree. That's the funny part. I fully agree with you. This game right here, yeah, that's one of my favorite games of all time. I have thousands of hours, but just because I stuck through the absolutely gargantuan learning curve that PoE has does not mean that it needs to be gargantuan. I'm a firm believer that if PoE just shuffled some things around, tidied up a bit, and cleaned up the gosh darn gym text like what in the actual heck is a new player supposed to do with this, then it would be a much better game. Take Tarkov. At the very least, just display the bullet stats somewhere in the actual game. New players should not have to wonder why Ultra Giga Chad Rat Eater 9000 just tanked their entire mag of 762 US and then turn around and one tap them in the thorax with Lapua AP. For EVE Online, I'll be honest, I don't play EVE, I just know that you're supposed to be some space dude that flies ships, day trade, specializes in geopolitical warfare, and perpetually has 100 browser tabs open or something like that. And Dwarf Fortress, well, it's really simple. Do you like this one or that one? Now, think about your favorite game. Does it need a casual player litmus test? Does it need design decisions that basically guarantee that all but the most hardcore of players are immediately intimidated? No, no, it does not need that. Because by making the game less complex, you then get access to every other player type out there while still keeping those hardcore players around. If the depth is there, the hardcore players who crave content are gonna stick around. You're not gonna turn them away from lack of complexity. It's the depth they care about. Also, who's to say that casual players can't turn into hardcore ones? What if X game is exactly their cup of tea and they just don't know it yet? But when they do decide to finally take the plunge, they see this and then go, yeah, no, I'm good. I gotta go to bed in an hour. I'm gonna go play a game of Apex instead, a piece. Sometimes all a gamer needs is a little push in the right direction, a little nudge. And every game should provide those nudges as much as possible by streamlining the information presented. And this streamlining needs to come in the design process. Take a game like League of Legends. Why do you think that League of Legends became the most popular game in the world? Could it have had something to do with the gameplay loop being both incredibly in-depth and accessible? Uh, spoilers, that's exactly what it was. Simple or self-explanatory moment-to-moment -moment gameplay mechanics packaged with clear visual and auditory feedback on top of an extremely obvious objective. I have a character. I move character down one of three very clear paths to choose. I find enemies. I click enemies. I fight enemies. I see buttons. I click buttons. buttons fight enemies better. I click more buttons. I kill enemies. I see money. I tried to spend money. I cannot spend money. I want to spend money. I get distracted by my need to spend money and I walk into a big laser guy. I die. I tried to spend money again. I buy item. I happy. Character respawns. That's it. Ask League of Legends. When I met my wife in college, the only games she had previously played were Nintendogs, Animal Crossing, and The Sims. I showed her League of Legends at the start of the 2016 season, and I kid you not, by the end of it, she had over four 
thousand games played. I was so proud. I also showed League of Legends to the RA that I was sharing a suite with, who was named Ash. Shout out Ash, you're a real one. He was studying biomechanical engineering and physics, double majoring. He was a pretty busy guy. Ash had literally never played video games before. At least that's how I remember it. Maybe it was like Minesweeper and that one pinball game that comes with Windows XP. Regardless, I too showed him some good old League of Legends and uh, let's just say that uh, he almost went home without a degree. And I'm not joking. Every single morning I would wake up to go work out. Every single morning I would see the light on under his door. For the entire semester. And it's not because he was an early riser. The reason for these newfound addicts is because League is the quintessential example of easy to learn, but hard to master. Once you play literally a single match, you have a rough boilerplate idea for every other match you'll ever play of League of Legends. But as soon as you queue up again and hop into your second match, all of a sudden, who the heck is this purple floaty dude with a laser sword on his arm? And what the heck is this big crocodile dude just teleporting straight into my face from I don't even know where? And who is this big ghost centaur that keeps coming out the bushes to smack my booty? Huh? What's a ward? And game after game after game after game, you'll continually learn intricacy after intricacy about not only your character, but all of the others that you're playing against. What their abilities are doing, how long the cooldowns roughly are, where to position for maximum pressure on them, on and on and on. Not to mention that the better you get, the less micro skill comes into play and the more macro movements and overall map knowledge begin to matter. When do I leave my ADC as a support and go ward near mid? If the enemy mid is overextended when I'm going up there, do I try to gank him? Or is the enemy jungler expecting me and waiting for a counter gank? What about when I I'm jungling. Do I go help my top laner who just got first blooded and is currently overextended yet again without any wards? Or do I simply ride him off as a losing lane and go help other ones instead? That's always the right call, by the way. My point is that the best games are both easy to learn and hard to master. High depth, low complexity. And there's really no reason why your favorite game cannot be both. Hardcore players are the lifeblood of a game and the only thing that keeps them around is depth, right? This depth can be things like a visible skill ceiling in a PvP game or just the sheer amount of mechanics in a PvE one. If there's nothing to master, the hardcore players are gone and that's never going to change. Thankfully, all that a hardcore gamer needs to play your game is for, well, the game to just exist. They already know what types of games they like the most, so they'll be actively searching for them and once they find yours, it better have some juicy content to back up. Casual players, on the other hand, or rather anyone who is not what I just described, will then find said game naturally due to all the attention that the hardcore boys are giving it. And here's where the complexity comes in. If the game cannot draw in the majority of those prospective casual players, the game's too complex. Remember, at the end of the day, it's not about the content itself. It's about how the content is presented. There is no excuse for failing to present things in a clear and concise manner, period. Like this, or this or that. Ultimately, all of those are design choices that detract from the game's overall appeal. Anyway, that's all I've got. If you guys like the new style of content, let me know. Thanks for watching. Peace out, boys. I'll catch you in the next video. I want to record my cat before she gets away. <laughs> I have a little green screen helper. Say hi. See if I can get around the green screen right here. Boom. Got a green screen kitty now. <laughs>